Hey everybody, Dan here, PA Country Cluckers. Today is the 28th of August. It is bottling day. One of the first things we're doing is this was not looking so hot. I cleaned it up, but this is what I kept my sanitizer in. It's usually only good for a couple weeks. It was no good, so we're gonna make new sanitizer. It, the instructions say a gallon of warm water for every tablespoon. So I don't have warm, so I'll take a gallon of hot, a gallon of cold, do that twice, or two gallons of hot in this case is what I'm gonna do. And two gallons of coal. It'll be warm water after that. And voila. Here's my second gallon of hot water. My quality assurance inspector is ensuring that we're meeting all applicable standards. And through the magic of YouTube, we'll be back and we have four gallons of warm water. Following the directions on the packaging for our one step no rinse cleanser one tablespoon per gallon of warm water four gallons of warm water and the reason it looks yellow is lighting it's yeah the lighting isn't the best in here because otherwise that would be gross anyway so here are the things you're going to need today first you need quality assurance inspections that's sarcasm and eye rolling you need sanitizer Obviously you need a bottle. We're using not your normal size bottle. These are just a tad bigger. We have some normal size bottles. This is a bottle cleaner. I'll show you the operation when we get to it. But essentially, you put that on there. You have sanitizer in the basin here. You push down and the sanitizer's spurted up to the top. Clean out anything that might be in there. In this case, it's just water. You need I need to use this. This is a wine thief or a wart thief to measure our specific gravity, which is what this guy is right here. Measures our specific gravity. You need this. This is a bottle filler. And for my particular setup, this piece goes right here, connects the tubing to the bottle filler. So now that we have all of our equipment assembled, we need caps. The particular kit that I got came with caps, came with these guys right here. We're going to throw these in the sanitizer. And we'll use those when, after we get the bottles filled. Next thing, sanitize bottles. All right, I'm going to show you one bottle here. This particular device, if you get it on correctly, when you press down, we'll inject the cleanser into the top. So this particular device, you press down hard and release. You can see this injecting the cleanser into the top part of the bottle to rinse it out. I'm gonna do this for all the bottles. Through the magic of YouTube, you don't have to see the whole thing. You can see that I've done one batch. I've got another batch over there. And then I have another thing of regular bottles I'll be doing. Just want to point out that these guys right here have been out of my garage for about a year. You notice the neck, let me get into some better light. The neck of these bottles has a boat ton of dust on it. Those are skin particles, dust, QAs ensuring that nothing's harmful here. But stuff you don't want in your beer. So I'm gonna take and plop these guys into the sanitizer and let them float around a bit. Get some of that dust off and then I will get them up here. As you can see, I've got a wide array of bottles. I've got the bigger ones over here. I've got another box of bigger ones I'm sanitizing. And then I had a box of little ones. I figured single servings, why not? Oh, one thing I might have missed, you need a towel, at least one, a clean towel, preferably not one that the uh, uh, QA or dog has been, you know, uh, snuggling with. You want a clean towel because it's going to get dirty and you're going to make a mess. Also, 
don't wear good clothes if you plan on doing this because you're going to get wet. And this is what I'm talking about. You're going to get wet. I mean, come on. And you look over here and you saw all the water on the countertop. Good times. All right. Next step on the directions. Bottling day. I've already marked the date. We're going to read the instructions, which at this point, I know the instructions, but we're still going to read them. Sanitize. Thoroughly clean and sanitize all brewing equipment, utensils, and bottles that will come in contact with the ingredients. Also, it doesn't say on here, but sanitize the caps. Uh, prepare a priming sugar. So, all right. In there, you can actually see it down there, is five gallons of beer. All of the yeast is inactive right now. It's not dead. It's inactive because there's too much alcohol and not enough sugar. There's not enough for them to eat, and they're swimming in their own sewage. Yes, alcohol is yeast sewage. Drink up, pals. So anyways, we're going to add more sugar to activate the yeast one final time, and they're going to produce carbon dioxide. But this time, instead of letting the carbon dioxide go out the top, we're going to cap the bottle and keep the carbon dioxide in the bottle and make the beer carbonated. So that's what we're doing right now. So it says take two uh, cups of water uh, and do, do a small saucepan to solve five ounce of priming sugar in two cups of boiling water. Water is boiling. You need to let it boil for five minutes. I usually do 10. No reason, but the instructions used to say 10. Uh, then we pour this into a clear bottling bucket and then siphon the beer from the fermenter in the bottling bucket. This is what you would do if you were using the bucket method. But because we have the craft of beer thing here, we're just going to pour that into the top and then we're going to stir it. Make sure the sugar gets all evenly distributed in there. And now through the magic of YouTube, you don't have to wait for the water to boil. The water is already boiling. Chuck our priming sugar in there. No real worries about this uh, scalding at the bottom. Grab a whisk. And now we'll set a timer for five minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. And everybody who watched that and has a Siri device, not sorry. All right, it's almost time. We got oh, just a few seconds left. I'm gonna take the top off of this guy. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the airlock. Now there's a layer of carbon dioxide that's on top of the beer at this point it is beer we don't want to disturb that we want to disturb it as little as possible because that's protecting the beer that's inside so as gently as possible gonna pry off this lid and you get to see how icky it really is you but again carbon dioxide's protecting the beer all right, now I gotta pour in our water. Yeah, so it helps if you have the video on. Uh, I took the sugar water and I already put it in here. It was already hot when I put it in and stirred it. Darn it. But anyway, I've not had any problems <coughs> with the hot water going directly into the beer mix because, well, yes, the temperature will kill the yeast, but I've not had a problem because there's billions and billions and trillions of billions of yeasties in there. And they're going to love that sugar. And the few that we killed off, well, that's protein, I guess. I don't know. So now we get a hiccup. Get to find the funnel right here. Get to plug this in. Not gonna turn that spigot on yet. Now for my next trick, we have our wine thief, beer thief. It's been sitting in the sterilizer with the uh, hydrometer in there and we're gonna steal some wort. And then we're gonna take a measurement, the final measurement if you will.
That looks like one point one 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 point zero one one. Now, I never put this uh, particular the stuff I steal back in. I'm gonna just chuck it down in the sink. I don't put it back in there. Got enough in there. All right, now everything's hooked up. We have the funnel connected to a tube. The tube is connected to the beer filler. So there's a trick to filling this up. This device, you push down and it allows the valve to open. You let up and the valve doesn't. Hey, get away from there. Those are clean. No, no, baby kitty. We're gonna fill it to the very top. Okay, and then I'll explain a concept. Okay, almost to the top. All right, we're at the top. There's a concept called headroom. You notice as I pull this out, the level of beer goes down. That leaves the precise amount of headroom needed. The headroom's needed in order to allow the carbon dioxide a place to go once it's emitted by the yeast. So that's an important concept. And there's people that say you need to have an inch, blah, blah, blah. I found this method by far the easiest. Up to the top, let her on out, perfect headroom. So now I've got a few bottles to fill up. Do the magic of YouTube. See you in a minute. All right, all of our bottles are filled. Next step is to cap them. So the caps are on all the bottles. They're just hand tight. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our capping gun tool and we're going to actually cap them. All right, so the last part of the day is cleaning, cleanup and storage of all the equipment. So if you didn't have a towel down, you found out just how much of a mess you're gonna make. I've learned to put a towel down. Anyway, um, storage. The beer needs to be kept out of light, direct sunlight, and it needs to weigh for about two weeks. And after two weeks, it'll be good to go. You'll be able to consume it. It'll be nice and fizzy. So today's the 28th, two weeks from today, I don't know, right about the time yeah, we're throwing a big party. So we'll have all this beer ready for a party.